Hello everyone, it's Shane Kanto, your Wasteland reviewer, and welcome to Welcome to the Wasteland. And this is my weekly show where I take a deep dive into a particular film, shaking up the structure a little bit with a new fresh start because last week I ended the Coen Brothers. And I went coast to coast from Blood Simple to the Ballad of Buster Scruggs, and hopefully we'll be getting a chance to review the tragedy of Macbeth later this year with Joel Cohen directing, Ethan Cohen not being involved this time around. Interested to see how that goes, but I'm still excited about that. But I'm, as, I'm sad to see my favorite directors go. And now shifting gears into another director, which I had my whole entire, like, I forget exactly how many directors. I think it was like a good 48 directors were involved in this tournament that I did on Instagram story and it came down to Stanley Kubrick beating Christopher Nolan and Quentin Tarantino at the end which I'm like some of my favorites Nolan's second favorite director Kubrick third favorite director and sound like a white guy who loves movies on the internet but Tarantino has dropped a little bit I think for me over time but still I love a lot of his films and now getting a chance to talk to about Kubrick starting this week very early on with Fear and Desire which is his first feature length film and we'll be taking that and Killer's Kiss and then The Killing before we jump into the films that most people know him for starting with Paths of Glory but we'll get there. The structure of the show now, I'm still going to start off with my coming attraction and then going into our feature. And to be honest, wasn't getting a whole lot of questions from people, so mostly I'm just, I was coming up with my own and answering my own questions. So I figured what might be more helpful is doing a recommendation section at the end where I talk about this maybe moving forward, recommending one new release that I really like that I want people to check out and get give a little extra attention to, and also a new watch from my watch list and giving a chance. These are films that they could be a hundred years old, they could be a year old. I just this time getting around to them. But so that's going to be the structure we got our coming attractions, our feature, and then wrapping up with recommendations. But getting started with our coming attractions for June 18th, I am definitely, this was an easy one, Luca. And this is a new Pixar film coming straight to Disney+. Plus. No premium access needed. This is just a release on Disney+. Plus. Little concern that Pixar is moving in this direction after Soul and now Luca. And they're kind of being relegated to that. Because I would have paid $30 for Soul over $30 for Mulan or Cruella. Just to put in perspective. Didn't mind so much for Raya thought that was like I was pretty excited about that one but you know I'm gonna be getting to watch Luca for free well included on my Disney Plus so I'm looking forward to checking it out and the synopsis on the Italian Riviera an unlikely and strong friendship grows between a human being and a sea monster disguised as a human and we have our two lead characters played by Jacob Tremblay and Jack Dylan Grazer, so two young and up-and-coming child actors turned teen actors, hopefully adult actors. We'll see where both of their careers go, and you throw in Maya Rudolph and some Italian actors as well. And this is from director Enrico Casarosa. And, you know, it's Pixar. That could have just been it. It's Italian. Being Italian-American, I'm just like, I'm pretty interested in that. I would like to see that. And based off of the trailer, it looks beautiful. I don't, I've only, well, to be fair, I've only watched like cl like clips or like stills. So I didn't watch the full trailer at this point. To be perfectly honest, haven't been watching a whole lot of trailers. Except when I go to the movies now, which is about once a week. We're getting there. At one point, I was at four or five times a week. We'll see when we get back to that. But for now... I haven't seen a full trailer for this. The idea seems interesting. I've heard that it's a really fine, sweet little film, and I'm down for that. So I'm pretty excited for Luca. I'm, I'll ride that Pixar hype train over to Disney Plus and watch it when it comes out next Friday. And 
hopefully all of you will be checking it out as well. So that's coming attraction for June 18th, and now we're shifting gears into the world of Stanley Kubrick. And Kubrick is a director that I have really loved his work for a long time. 2001 A Space Odyssey is my third favorite film of all time. I'm looking over at my 2001 Cinerama Dome poster over there, and it's of like it's one of those kinds of films that just takes me away and I'm in just complete awe of the craftsmanship and what he was able to create with it. You have films like The Shining, which is my favorite horror film of all time. I love A Clockwork Orange. It is disturbing and impactful and dark and menacing. Dr. Strangelove is the movie that I laugh at the most that I feel like I shouldn't be laughing at, to be perfectly honest. And getting a chance to rewatch Barry Lyndon and Paths of Glory recently, I just have a greater appreciation for Kubrick's other works. I've only seen Lolita once and The Killing once, and Full Metal Jacket, of course, most know for the first half of the film, which is extremely impactful, and then Eyes Wide Shut, which is one of the more most interesting erotic thrillers you can find out there. And you have this wide breadth of work from Stanley Kubrick, and it all starts here with Fear and Desire as his first feature-length film at a crisp hour and two minutes. And it focuses on four soldiers trapped behind enemy lines must confront their fears and desires. And this is a nondescript war. There's This is not like the British versus the Nazis or the Americans versus the Nazis. This is just four soldiers on one side trying to make their way out of the woods, potentially down a river. And this is starring Kenneth Harp, who plays Lieutenant Corby. And we have Frank Silvera, who plays Mac. We have Paul Mazursky, who plays Sidney, and Stephen Coit, who plays Fletcher. Those are our four soldiers, and you have Virginia Leaf, who plays the girl, and we'll talk about her soon. And this film is a beautifully shot black and white film with Kubrick doing his own cinematography. You have composer Gerald Freed, and this film... Is, I was I was very interested watching this film, and you know, you have a director that's so early on in his career, are they them yet? And you have directors like Quentin Tarantino right off the bat. It's Tarantino. Reservoir Dogs, you know it's him. You watch Following from Christopher Nolan, and it's like, you feel it in there. And I was really interested to see if this film felt very Kubrick. It is very Kubrick. And it is very interesting in the ways that it's very Kubrick. But this film is a beautiful black and white shoot. It is gorgeous. The camera work is so precise and intentional, which it's Kubrick. And the themes of war are laid down very clearly through narration at the beginning of the film as we meet our four soldiers out in the middle of the woods and this idea of the war in the mind and that's the voiceover we're getting that really what we're fighting is what we perceive for ourselves on that battlefield and we're each processing our own little war in our heads and we get that feeling with the lieutenant and Mac and Sydney throughout the film. Fletcher is kind of just there, but you get three very clearly defined characters in this film, and the filmmaking is really impressive, and we quickly gain perspective on what this film is about. It is set up. We gain perspective on each of these characters, the lieutenant being a very cold, precise person, Mac being a very vindictive and very emotional and intense human being with some question questionable perspectives on things in Sydney you get the sense that he is the young overwhelmed one in this situation who might not be ready for this task being in the military and like I said Fletcher it's just kind of there 
we see their plane, it's clearly laid out as they're drawing it out in the dirt in front of them. And then bam, we get this dog, this Doberman shows up, and it's a very sweet little dog. And like the lieutenant picks up a rock to like shoo it away. And we get that little moment of realizing that this lieutenant's a pretty intense dude and has a coldness to him. And you have this like thumping score from Freed going on in the background. It has a little bit of themes that feel very military-esque and war film kind of feel, but it also has this dark, ominous kind of feel to it as well. We have them going through the woods and they're each talking in their own heads over each other, overlaid on top of each other, all this voiceover, and it's so impactful helping us feel the mental state that our men are at as they're just wandering through the woods and tensions building along the road. And you start to get a sense that when the Lieutenant and Mac and Sydney start going back and forth at each other, there's some disdain here. They come from very different perspectives and they're not all on the same page. You can see a regret and fear upon the face of Sydney and Mac seems to be chewing things up a bit too much. And then the lieutenant has a very cold affect about things, very introspective. And then there's some great technical work. You get some early like binocular shots uh, with the how the camera is being used within that framing. And that works as we see this general across the way as they're trying to set up the raft. And plane flying over by, building up that tension and suspense. Did they see us? Can we continue to do our duty? And then we start, throughout the film, we get more and more very close, extreme close-ups of Mac and Sydney, of their eyes and their expressions. And we really start to feel and that physical acting from Silvara and Mazursky is really laying in there. They come upon a cabin late at night and they're like peeking through the window. We're watching these soldiers just eating their stew and bam, we charge in and how this action is shot. It's brutal, it's violent, it's quick edits from knives coming down to hands crushing bowls, stew clenching in their hands and then hands opening and stopping move stop moving and then we get these eerie haunting shots of these dead bodies across the floor and you're just feeling how dark and ominous this film is this is where you really get like this is very kubrick there's a darkness about this and this voice over we are islands from the cap and from the lieutenant we are each of our own floating through here and that's why they're so introspective while we get to see these perspectives from each of these characters the mounting tension between mac and sydney as we come upon this young woman and the tension is building kubrick really knows how to build that tension and suspense as we're peering out through the bushes at this young woman and they capture her and you see how each of them react uh sydney's very afraid and Max not about taking advantage of the situation as lieutenant like slowly putting his fingers down her face and you could see his wedding ring on and it just reinforces like the kind of man this is and Mac call it like brings back this call out to that we should act like civilized men which Mac was being brutal to those soldiers the night before and the captain had to like stop him so there's that tension there. And this woman played by Virginia Leaf, this the girl, she acts so well with her eyes and her physicality throughout her whole entire performance. And then we start to really get she's tied up to a tree and left with Sydney, and we get to see her perspective, and Sydney is just there's an uncertainty and tension building with Sydney. He's losing it. He's out there. He starts trying to act out these things. But we can see he starts like grabbing onto her, putting his head into her stomach, and this mounting desire that he has. And you see, going back to the title, her fear 
all through her eyes and her acting and his desire mounting and you could see it all over his face. He doesn't need to say too much because you could just feel it. You could see it all over his face. And there's some really bad touch moments coming. And we cut back to Mac and this building heightening murderous desire that he has as he's peering upon this general across the water. And we cut back, building tension as the woman escapes, about to escape, and it's one of the creepiest shots of the whole entire film of Sydney cupping water in his hand and her trying to drink out of it and lick it up, and him just going like, getting so turned on by it, and me getting so turned off watching it, and you could just feel the Kubrick in every second of that because it's like that's where Kubrick's sensibility and his perversion of humanity comes in and he fires his gun as she runs away and it's all acted in a way where he's releasing his load into her and she dies and he just is like drained and, like, you get that parallel there, and it's really creepy and so well done that it's so creepy. And he runs off. Mac is a bit thrown off, and the lieutenant internally is just questioning the why. The why are we here? Why is he here? And Mac has his one man, one gun. He wants to do this as Mac goes out on the river. And then we cut to the general who happens to be the same actor as the lieutenant, and the same actor who plays Fletcher is in there with him, and we get the story from this general, and we get this whole other perspective, and it's really sinking in the perspective that no matter what side it is in a war, it's just men. You're fighting each other. You're fighting yourselves as humans, and I think the casting here, whether it was done because of whatever reason, it feels like this was done on purpose to show that mirror. And just the black and white, as he's just sitting there smoking and the smoke's coming up above him, is just very evocative of all the feelings. And you have this mountain tension as Mac starts unloading his gun from his raft as all these guards start shooting at him. And... We have Fletcher doing like the first thing he does in the whole entire film, creeping up to the window and firing in and shooting his counterpart and the general who comes crawling out just for the lieutenant to shoot him in the head. And it feels very on purpose that the lieutenant shoots the general, both played by the same men. And it's very meaningful and symbolic in the way that Kubrick is trying to be here. As Mac drifts, dying on his raft, and he finds Sydney, who say they are all naked and trying to plead with Mac to not close his eyes, and they get away on a plane, the lieutenant and Fletcher, and come back the next day in the fog. And really, the lieutenant sitting there thinking, "What, uh, what I wanted, I wanted before, and all it is is a trick to perform." that this is what we want to be in this war. And it goes back to a very interesting sequence earlier in the film where Sidney was acting out in front of the girl and talking about him being a magician. And it makes so much sense as that all comes together in that way. And just this eerie singing of Sidney as the film cuts to this wooded landscape, somber music playing, and we cut to black. And this film is so heavy and layered in so much Kubrick. Like, I was pretty surprised about how much you get of him so early on in his career. It's so fully realized all the symbolism and ideas that he brings in his films. He did not write it, but things feel so intent. Like, even if he didn't write it, you know he was so involved in it. And it feels so very intentional. And this is an impressive first outing for him. It's very symbolic and character-driven film. Some might be like it's just like a wandering of an hour leading up to this assassination. And some dark things happen. But that's very Kubrick. And I was really impressed by the craft, the direction, 
characterizations and the symbolism in this short little film that's only an hour and two minutes packed a lot in. I had a lot of notes. I was sitting there watching this movie, I'm like, wow, I have a lot to talk about here, and it's really impressive. And if you haven't seen Fear and Desire, it's on Amazon, you can rent it. I would encourage checking it out if you're a fan of Kubrick. Really broaden the perspective on his career. But those are my thoughts on Fear and Desire. If you've seen it, put some comments below and we can chat about it. But now we're going to be shifting gears into our recommendations section. And the one film that I've watched in the past week that was a new release that I really wanted to sh do a shout out for was Holler. Which is, I called it in my review, this might be the never rarely, sometimes always of this year. This small, raw, intimate, almost documentarian-like, just voyeuristic journey into the life of of just such regular people. This in Southern Ohio, as a young woman who's struggling to keep the water on and pay her rent, starts working with her brother at this scrapyard. And this film from Nicole Reigel is just impactful and emotional and character driven. And so deep and impressive in the way that it portrays so many hardships going on in our country and Jessica Barden is such a great lead in this film she really carries it as Ruth and Austin M. Emilio who plays Hark who is the guy at the scrapyard that she starts developing an interesting relationship with and there's some tension there's some abuse here and this is an impactful emotional film definitely worth checking out and speaking of impactful and emotional films. One film that I watched off of my watch list, which this was recommended to me by Mac from uh, Mac Movie Reviews when I had him on for Lost in the Wasteland, was Boys in the Hood. And I finally got around to watching this, and John Singleton is like a 24-year-old making this film. This is impressive. The human drama, the deep thematic ideas that are so prevalent in 2021, 20 years later, this hits so hard. And watching it, and these great young actors, you have Cuba Gooding Jr., you have Ice Cube appearing in this film, you have Morris Chestnut, Regina King, Nia Long, and then throw in Angela Bassett and Lawrence Fishburne, who stole the show for me as Furious Styles, who is Trey, our main character's father. He is so impressive and gives such great insight and is such a great character. This film, heartbreaking and so relatable in the way that it's so very human, but also just puts a light, shines a light onto these issues, these systematic issues that affect so many black men and women. And watching this film and all the heart that went into it and the story and the characterizations, they're so meaningful and real. And I'm so glad that I got around to watching this. And if you haven't seen it, this is must-see. This is a must-see film. But those are my recommendations for this week. So go check out Holler, which is on VOD now, which I watch on Amazon. And you could also rent Boys in the Hood on Amazon as well. But that's a wrap for this week as we started our journey with Stanley Kubrick. And just to give a little bit of a uh, look into the near future, next week we're going to be jumping into Kubrick's second feature film after this, which was Killer's Kiss. So if you're interested in joining the show to talk about it next week, please feel free to leave a comment below or message me on Instagram, which this is a crime drama noir thriller. Ready to catch a train to his hometown, a washed up boxer tells us about the strange and twisty events that happened to him the past couple of days. Hour and seven minute film. I'm looking forward to checking this out as this is a the only other Kubrick film I have never seen of his feature films, so I'm pretty excited about it. From then on, once we get up to Killing and all the way up to Eyes Wide Shut, I have seen them and have strong feelings about them. So I'm looking forward to checking this out. And like I said, if you're interested in joining the show for next week, 
just comment on this video or message me on Instagram, The Wasteland Reviewer. But otherwise, I hope you enjoyed the show. Hopefully, I encouraged you to go check out Fear and Desire to see this really impactful early form of Stanley Kubrick and checking out Holler, Luca, and Boys in the Hood. So a lot of great films to check out. But thank you, as always, for tuning in and supporting your Wasteland Reviewer.